Fresh, the new cream deodorant presents David Harding, Counter Spy. Washington, calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Washington, calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Harding, Counter Spy. Calling Washington. David Harding Counter Spy is brought to you by Fresh. Fresh, the new cream deodorant that stops perspiration worries safely. Switch to Fresh to be sure. weeks ago, Charles Pierce, a man in his early thirties, immaculately dressed, slight, with piercing eyes, stood in the hallway of a large gray stone apartment building in Baltimore. With him was a young woman, Dora Lester. I do not feel this is good, Charles. The biggest opportunity we ever had, Dora. You have never met this man. Oh, I know all about him, though. He is in command. You're very strange in my stomach. A woman's intuition. That's enough. We're paid well to take chances. You do not think this is a trick? You have your gun? Mm -hmm. Always. But I won't need it, Dora. It's a great honor to meet him. His espionage work is known all over the world. For two years, he was in command of all Gestapo agents in Spain. Yes? Mr. Burley? Yes? We received your message to come here. When? Day before yesterday. We were in Boston. Come in. Come over to the table. Just sit down, please. Now, if you will establish your identity. Now, this is my lady friend, Dora Lester. She worked with me under Hans. Just Taylor. a moment. Remove your hat, Dora. Why, yes, yes. Uh huh. This picture is a very good likeness of you. You're... You've got a picture of me? When was it taken? The important part is that it was taken for identification. So you use the name Charles Pierce. Well, you wish some identification, Mr. Burley? Unnecessary. I was standing unobserved right at the desk of the hotel when you signed in last night. I wanted to see your handwriting. Well, no wonder, Mr. Burley, you're famous for your precautions. From now on, you two will take orders from me. Come along. May I ask where we are going? To the eighth floor balcony of a certain building. You'll be very surprised at what you see. A person could very easily fall to his death from... This balcony? Couldn't he, Mr. Burley? Very easily, Dora. Now, Charles, see that long, low building over there? The one fenced in with the barbed wire? Yeah. That building is the United States Government Laboratory. It covers these two acres. And the guards who are patrolling there? Just a moment. Till I close the fire door. There are 12 guards there, night and day. There's a beam of an electric eye which goes all around the building. Automatic protective devices of every description. What do they protect in gold? Something even more valuable. Bugs. Bugs? You're fooling. No. They have bugs in there worth as much as $5,000 each. I hate bugs. 
I couldn't hate any bug worth $5,000. What is the mystery of them, Mr. Burley? One of the greatest allies of the Japanese, disease caused by jungle bugs. Disease Americans have never experienced. Well, the United States government has had hundreds of specialists capturing these odd bugs in the Pacific. Oh. These bugs are brought to this country and placed in that building. Each species, specially heated rooms, tropical conditions, their own special food. They're bred there. Millions of them. You mean they keep all of the bugs there so the United States can experiment on them to develop poison sprays to kill each different kind? Exactly. New poisonous sprays could not be developed to kill these bugs if there were not thousands of those different species to experiment on. The breeding of some of these bugs is a very complicated process. For instance, Mr. Burley, the United States Marines land on an island. Yes, and possibly in 24 hours, a certain percentage of the Marine invaders will be suffering from sickness caused by some kind of a bite from these little-known bugs. Each island, each jungle is hundreds of different kinds. But suppose the Marines do know about the bugs before they land. What can they do about it? If a certain poisonous spray has been developed... Effective against the type of bugs they know they will encounter. American planes fly over the island. Thousands of gallons of the spray. Spray the jungles. Many of the bugs will be destroyed. Mm -hmm. No wonder those bugs in that laboratory are valuable. But the way that laboratory is guarded, it would be impossible to get near it or destroy the bugs. Impossible for anyone but me. See that building just at the end of the laboratory? Yeah. That is a scientific library. And it is open to medical students who wish to do research there on insecticides. Is it guarded? Certainly. The guard at the door. He searches everyone when they enter or leave. The guard's name is Connors. Connors. In the evening when he's off duty, Connors often drinks beer down the street over at that restaurant with a sign. Yeah. You are to meet him. Find out what his hobbies are. What he eats. What he likes. Then report to me by telephone. my apartment at 11 tonight. And you visit the scientific library again tomorrow? I will have had something planned. Hello, Connors. Hi, Charlie. Well, I'll be... Of all the times you've come to the library here, you didn't tell me you owned a dog. <laughs> How do you like him? Come here, boy. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> hey, that's a peach of a dog. Belgian Shepherd. Yeah. Boy, let's see your mouth. <laughs> you liking dogs so much, Cutters, you sold me the idea. So I bought this one. About two years old, huh? Uh-huh. Now you got something. Yeah, and he's highly trained. I don't want to lose out on my reading at the library here, so... Uh... Can't I take him in with me and tie him to the leg of a chair? Well, I don't know if I should let you, but... <laughs> yeah, that dog's almost human, ain't he? How about it? Okay, take him in with you. Hey, Charlie! Wait a minute. Yeah? I got to set you, you know. You still have to after knowing me so well? This library section's right next to the scientific laboratory, you know. I wouldn't let my own mother in without searching her. Okay. Arms up. Yeah. Turn around. Okay. 
You're sure a thorough guard, Connie. I got two kids in the Pacific. You bet I'm thorough. Okay, Charlie. If you keep them quiet, you can take them in. You know, Dora, this dog doesn't like Mr. Burley's apartment here. I can see from the way he looks, Charlie. Now, Charles. Yes, sir? For three weeks now, you've been taking this dog into the library next to the laboratory. You sure the guard likes the dog? Connie? Crazy about him. That ammo potassium I gave to the dog. Really made him look good and sick. Oh, yeah, yeah. His nose was hot and dry. His, uh, his eyes glassy. Mm-hmm. And you did not bring the dog's apparent sickness to the attention of Connor. Oh, no, no, no. I was just going into the scientific library with the dog when he looked at him and he said, uh, Your dog's sick, Charlie. Give him sulfur thiazole. And if I was you, I'd put a blanket on him for a couple of days. Keep him bundled up. Perfect. So the guard himself suggested the blank. Sure did. Wonderful. Yeah, easy, boy, easy. Come here. It's our big moment, Charlie. A climax. Now, the pentalite. Pentalite? What's that? It's an explosive more powerful than TNT. Explosive? That's right. And a little time watch. That'll set it off. You, you will sew the explosive and the time watch right into the underside of the dog's blanket. Well, I... you'll walk into the library with a sick dog that the guard Connors has got a weakness for. He'll search you, but with his type of mind, he'll never think to feel under the dog's heavy blanket because he himself suggested the blanket. Yeah, yeah. But what about me? You'll tie the dog to a leg of a chair in the library. The time watch will set the charge off at exactly 11. At five minutes of 11, make an excuse. Walk out. Disappear. Well, I... I dreamed of such a thing. Well, blow the library and the laboratory with all its expensive bugs off the face of the earth. It'll take them years to collect and breed new ones. It seems like the dog knows what's going on. Tomorrow morning, Charles. Take the dog in a taxi cab. Drive right to the laboratory. You'll have enough explosive wrapped around him to blow a city to kingdom come. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we come to that part of our program known as Be Fresh or Be Fired. <laughs> yes, the Be Fresh or Be Fired department. Maybe you might want to call it the Be Fresh or Be Lonely department. Well, anyhow, it's a quiz corner where a fresh answer is always welcome. First question. Why do you refer to 4 o'clock in the working day as the time when you're apt to come up against the deodorant deadline? And the answer. Because when you're working, an embarrassing deodorant failure is more likely to happen toward the day's end. When you're out on a date at night, 10 o'clock is another sort of zero hour. But why be worried? Switch to that new cream deodorant, Fresh, to be sure. Second, a man's question. Is using Fresh a sissy thing to do? And the answer? Well, Fresh is a big seller among GIs and post exchanges all around the world. That's plenty answer. Which brings us to a question frequently asked. I get conflicting advice from people I know on how to be sure of personal daintiness. I'm confused. Well, friends, as many famous beauty editors and authorities on good grooming can tell you... Modern science has the answer, and Fresh brings it to you. In Fresh, you get the benefit of the most effective perspiration-stopping ingredient known to science. Fresh contains an exclusive ingredient. Fresh cream deodorant stops perspiration worries completely and safely. It's safe for you and for your clothing. It's creamy and smooth, not sticky, doesn't dry out, and it's never gritty. So it's a pleasure to switch to Fresh, to be sure. Back to David Harding, Counter Spy. Driver, 
Move up right in front of the scientific library. Right next to the, uh, the laboratories there. Eh? Okay, buddy. What's the matter with your dog? Got the pip? <laughs> Not feeling good. I was wondering why you had a blanket on him in this hot weather. Fifty-five, mister. Let me get my dog out first. Come on, boy. Get out. Get out. <laughs> he seems to like staying in my cab, huh? Get out. Come on, come on, come on. Hey, I guess he sees the big dog the woman's got over there. Got the change for a dollar? Oh, sure. Well, I guess the big police dog over there don't like your dog. Stop it, stop it. Hey, there. Hey, that woman's having trouble holding her dog. Hey, hold on to your dog. Don't bring him over here. Gonna be some action. Hey, hold on to that dog. Boy, come here, come here now. You're too late, Miss Hey, you gotta hold that dog. Get your dog away. I can't. Come on, boy. Come here, come here. She's lost come him. On. street in front of Baltimore Experimental Laboratories, there has been a big explosion on sidewalk, blowing taxi cab and two or more persons to pieces. Emergency. Harding speaking. All roving Washington counterspy investigators leave for Baltimore immediately. Emergency. Explosion in front of government laboratories. Everett, I want you to leave for Baltimore with me at once. This is the craziest case I ever heard of, Mr. Harding. Why would anybody want to blow up the street in front of the government experimental laboratory? You think it was an attempt to blow up the laboratory and it went wrong? Definitely. The guard in the research laboratory saw it happen. And the explosion resulted from a dogfight. A dogfight? The most fantastic thing. We're up against a very unusual mind, Everett. Anything left from the explosion to examine? Nothing. The man who had one of the dogs, the woman who had the other dog, the taxi cab, the taxi cab driver, all were blown to bits. It was a terrific explosion. As soon as we reach Baltimore, we'll set up a thorough investigation. Baltimore Field Office, Harding speaking. We located the kennels, Mr. Harding, where the dog was bought. Man came in. He bought the dog without leaving his name or address. What do our agents report from the scene of the explosion? Not a thing. It must have been a terrific explosion. What about the man who drove the taxi? Uh, he's a discharged veteran, good American. Oh. Uh -huh. Well, Everett, this is one of the most uniquely conceived plots. There just isn't any starting point. Let me think a minute. We've got to find the starting point. These agents will make another attempt to destroy that laboratory. What are your orders, sir? Enemy agents had a dog. They now don't have a dog. We could start a house-to-house -house canvas. Well, that'll take us months. Come back to the field office, Everett. I've got an idea. We'll work out of here. I'm feeling very nervous, Mr. Burley. Can't we leave this apartment and go someplace? What time is it, Dora? Almost midnight. All right. We'll go out to eat. Seems funny not having Charlie around. Don't mention that fool. He bungled my whole plan. Have the newspapers said anything about the explosion? Just one little item. The government must have clamped down with censorship. You're uh, going to try some other way to destroy the laboratory? Of course. But this time, I'll do it myself. Oh. You're, um... Uh, you're rather pretty, Dora. <laughs> I like you, too. But who's, who's that? You don't suppose Charlie really wasn't killed? Oh, strange, this time of night. I'm 
frightened. Stop it. I didn't leave one possible clue. Yes? Are you Mr. Burley who lives here? Yes. I'm David Harding of the United States Counter Spy. This is one of my agents, Mr. Everett. May we come in, Mr. Burley? Why, yes, yes, come in. This is Miss Dora Lester, a friend of mine. How do you do, Miss Lester? This is Mr. Everett. How do you do? Miss Lester. May I ask why you have called, Mr. Harding? Well, three days ago, Mr. Burley, there was a dog which caused an explosion in front of the Baltimore Scientific Laboratories. Why, that's strange. Yes, very strange, Mr. Burley. In fact, peculiar. These are government orders. Neither one of you is to move. Just a minute. No minute at all. I'm frisking you. No gun. Ever check, Miss Lester? No gun either. Mr. Harding, your attitude is uncalled for. Mr. Burley, my men have been covering Baltimore. Restaurants, meat markets, pet shops, formulas, everything. Well, we found a restaurant right across the street where a man had been buying food for a dog every day. He hasn't bought any such food for the last three days. I suppose you're referring to me. Yes. Well, uh, what am I supposed to say? You're supposed to do some pretty tall explaining. Where is your dog, Mr. Burley? He, uh, died. Oh? He didn't die by being blown to bits, did he, Mr. Burley? No. My dog died a natural death. Ah, I see. Well, when a dog does die a natural death, of course, there's always the body. Isn't there? Why, uh, yes. Where is your dog's body, Mr. Burley? Well, I was very attached to him. I took him and buried him in the country. Suppose you show us where. At this time of night? Yes. All right. Must I drive out, too? I'm afraid, Miss Lester, you must. David Harding will be back in a moment. But meanwhile, what do you think is the best advice to give to a young lady who says... You know, when my lipstick has gone back on me, or when it's worn off, or, <laughs> or maybe kissed off, my little mirror is a good friend. It always warns me. But when my deodorant has gone back on me, nothing or no one will warn me. What's a girl to do? Well, friends, as many famous beauty editors and experts on good grooming and personal charm can tell you, modern science has the answer. And Fresh brings it to you. Yes, Fresh contains the most effective perspiration-stopping ingredient known. Fresh contains an exclusive ingredient. Fresh stops perspiration worries completely and safely. Ladies and gentlemen... Each and every one of you, someday, sometime, may reach your deodorant deadline. The deodorant you are using may suddenly stop working. Why take chances? For lasting protection, switch to fresh. To be sure, that's... F-R-E-S-H. Fresh. Now, back to David Harding, Counter-Spy. Would you like me to help your agents in the digging, Mr. Harding? They're doing all right, thank you, Mr. Burley. I'll just switch the beam of the searchlight, Everett. I feel like I'm going to faint. Keep still, Dora. You evidently don't believe me about burying my dog here, Mr. Hart. I'm afraid I don't, Mr. Burley. Look, Mr. Harding. There is something down there. What? Huh. Ever dig a little more right there. Right. Beat that. What do you think, Chief? Let me focus the flashlight. Mr. 
Mr. Burley. I apologize. Well, let's forget it. I thought your whole story of burying your dog here was preposterous. Well, I've had a dog for quite a while. Three days ago, he got taken with cramp. Died before I could get a doctor. I felt so badly, I brought him here and buried him in the field. Miss Lester, we owe you an apology also. I'm so nervous and upset. Frightened me so the way you came into the apartment. We do make mistakes sometimes, and this is one. Well, we'll just have to start from the beginning again and look for another clue. I'll arrange immediately, Mr. Burley, for one of my agents to drive you and Miss Lester back to your apartment. <sighs> Seems so good to be back in the apartment again. The poor driver running out of gas. <laughs> All over being upset from your experience tonight, Dora? Yes, Mr. Burley, I guess so. Everyone makes mistakes, you know. Even Mr. Harding. He'd be a very charming man. I don't see how you ever found in that darkness where you buried that dog. Oh, but... that was simple. That was a dirty trick you pulled on me, Burley. I'm not in the habit of telling everyone everything. If you could have told me that you killed another dog and buried him out there. How do you think I felt all that time when you were claiming you did and... I thinking as soon as we got out there, there wouldn't be any dog's grave and we'd be caught. You might as well learn to trust my judgment. I'll go into your room and get cleaned up. We'll go out to a restaurant and get something to eat. Charles used to tell me everything he was doing. And Charles spoiled my whole plan and got himself blown to pieces. Just the same, we had fun together and we... Get your hands up, both of you. What's the meaning of this? Put your hands out. These cuffs are going on you. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I can explain. You've already done your explaining, Burley. I hoped you wouldn't suspect anything when my agent pretended to run out of gas while bringing you two back to the apartment. It gave me time to go to the police station and see if anyone during the past three days had lost a black shepherd dog with a tooth missing from the lower right jaw. What does that prove? It proves that when your other dog was blown to pieces, you didn't dare go to the kennels and buy another. So you looked until you could steal one. You killed him and buried him out there just in case there was some slip and you were approached. Will I be put in prison if I tell everything I know? Shut up, you fool. What I'd like to do to you, Burley, is throw you to a whole kennel of dogs. They'd give you what you deserve. But instead, you're going to go to the electric chair. And a lot of men will be coming home from the Pacific who wouldn't be if your fiendish plan had worked. Burley, consider yourself under arrest by the United States government for espionage and murder. Mr. Harding to tell you about next week's case. I have before me a report of a German minesweeper which had just sailed into an Atlantic port and given itself up. I have here a report of a suspect living at an expensive, exclusive summer hotel overlooking that same port. This girl has recently fallen in love. And here's a report of a body just found in the same harbor. All these things don't happen like that unless they're carefully planned. This case is an emergency. We're leaving to investigate it immediately. Hear the startling, exciting account of this case, Wednesday, August 1st, same time, same station. David Harding, Counter Spy. David Harding Counter Spy is brought to you by Fresh. Fresh, the new cream deodorant that stops perspiration worries safely. Switch to Fresh, to be sure. <laughs> David Harding Counter Spy is a Phillips H. Lloyd production for Fresh, the new cream deodorant. This is the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs> 